post-exertional malaise, and COVID long haulers. The first thing I want you to do is go and get a pen and a piece of paper. Let's answer these questions. There's five questions. The first category is about the frequency. So throughout the last month, how often have you had these symptoms? And the next category is about severity. Throughout the past month, how much has the symptom bothered you? Pause the video, take the questions. Okay, if you have your answers, if you circled twos and above, you have post-exertional malaise. If you answered three or four, your post-exertional malaise is likely very unstable at this time. What is it? Post-exertional malaise or PEM is when symptoms such as disabling fatigue or exhaustion, difficulty thinking, pain, exercise intolerance, and other symptoms are made worse by exertion. It can be triggered by physical, cognitive, mental, social, or emotional exertion, and it varies among different people. The worsening of symptoms by exertion can happen immediately or it can happen 24 to 72 hours after the exertion. This can make it difficult to predict or manage. Sometimes it can take days, weeks, or even months to recover from it. The exhaustion can be disabling and it can affect different symptoms or parts of the body. Post-exertional malaise is a feature of the inability to produce sufficient energy on demand and it is characteristic amongst those with myalgic encephalomyelitis, chronic fatigue syndrome, and now COVID long haulers. This is a push crash cycle. You're frustrated because you haven't been able to do the activities that you enjoy doing. You overdo it. You have an increase in your symptoms. Then you rest because you have to, and then you feel better. Your symptoms go down, and then you do an activity because you're tired of not being able to do the things you enjoy, and then you overdo it, and then your symptoms flare, and then you rest because you have to, and then your symptoms go down. This is a push-crash cycle, but it can also lead to downward spirals where when you have a crash, symptoms are increasing in both number and severity. Let's pretend every activity has a cost. Watching a movie, playing with your kids, reading a book. Pretend these activities cost you five cents, 25 cents, 10 cents. And then every time you rest, you get a nickel. And every time you get a really good night's sleep, you get a dollar. Every time you have a PEM crash, you have a $36 overdraft fee. You must avoid post-exertional malaise and the push-crash cycle in order to heal. Here are some really good handouts on post-exertional malaise. This is different than almost any other deconditioning exercise program that there is out there. It is different. That's why people are doing the same things they've done at other times in their lives and it's not working. With most people for rehabilitation, we do graded exercise, which means we do a little bit today and then tomorrow you should be able to do more. However, with post-exertional malaise, people actually perform worse 24 hours after performing an activity because they got wiped out the first time and they don't have any energy left. 
So their cardiopulmonary function is decreased. Stop trying to push your limits. Overexertion will harm your recovery. Rest is your most important management strategy. We're going to work on getting you out of that push crash cycle. We're going to learn your zone of tolerance. And this involves recognizing your own symptoms in real time so you can stay in your zone. Now the symptoms are gonna vary from person to person, but everybody has a towel. It can be your breathing patterns, it can be your lightheadedness, sweating, tremors, headaches, heart palpitations, sensory sensitivities, feeling of frustration. These are things that you need to notice so you can stop overdoing it before it starts. So this is the COVID long haulers model for activity rest rest is at the bottom rest means that you are breathing easily through the nose you're engaging your diaphragm you're relaxing all your muscles you are utilizing calm senses like smells or calming music you can easily focus on your body and on its sensations and you can take an eye break if you need to. Eye break, brain break. Okay. You are gonna have to do this consistently throughout the day, and then you need to do it immediately anytime you get to a challenge zone or a danger zone. The next step up from this is easy. This is where you're gonna be spending most of your day. If we had a one through 10 scale, you would be at a two or a three. If you're paying attention to your heart rate, this is about 20% of your max heart rate. You can breathe easily through your nose. You feel physically comfortable. What you're doing feels automatic and sensations feel pleasant. The next step up from this is when you start to notice something being a challenge. This is when you are at a four or a five out of a 10 scale or 50% of your max heart rate. This is when it becomes challenging to breathe just through your nose. You might have to use pursed lip breathing or you might notice you start to inhale or exhale through your mouth. This involves some physical discomfort. This is when you have to focus on something and you notice a cognitive effort or this is where sensations start to become mildly uncomfortable. So during the day, it's okay to do this for intervals, but not for long periods of time. The higher you scored on the DePaul questionnaire, the shorter those intervals are going to be able to be because your system needs to be able to adjust to this challenge without interpreting it as a threat. If you are in a two, mostly twos for your answers, you might be able to stay in the challenge zone for quite a while, maybe 30 minutes, 40 minutes. If you have threes, we might be talking 10 or 15 minutes. If you are scoring fours, you might only be able to be in the challenge zone for an interval of five or so minutes. Above this, I have the danger area. This is where you need to avoid going further. This is your area where you notice the signs and signals and you stop. This involves when you are breathing in and out through your mouth or breathing quickly. You feel frustrated. You feel irritated. You feel like your brain is shutting off. You feel like sense sensations become overwhelming this is when you notice your long hauler symptoms the most. Now, to make this even more challenging, this isn't just physical. This is for physical effort, cognitive effort, social effort, emotional effort, and sensory exertions. So what that means is if this is physically restful for you, but you're doing a cognitive task, that takes it up to the next level. If it's an easy task, but 
there's lots of loud and unpredictable noises or there's lights going on and off or many people around, that's gonna take it up to the next level. All of these contribute to the use of your energy. I am going to be giving free COVID long haulers education and therapeutic treatment ideas. My program is gonna be divided into three parts, how to rest, how to get rooted, and how to rise. If this stage right now is frustrating for you, then let's teach you how to rest better so that you are able to grow. We're not gonna be these kinds of trees. <laughs> We're not going to be the tree that gives all its energy away to other people and has nothing left for itself. We are not going to be the tree that tries to do things and grow beyond its root structure and then it topples over because it does not have the balance and stability that it needs. I am an occupational therapist, but this video and all the videos and information I'm contributing are general pieces of information. It is not intended to replace therapy. It's not intended to be healthcare advice or medical advice. If you're interested in learning how to rest, how to root, how to grow and rise, please send me an email, touchtreelife at gmail.com. Thank you.